Now, shifting focus, NASA's most powerful rocket, the Artemis 1, is all set to launch on Monday between 8.33 a.m. ET and 10.33 a.m. ET. Now, in India, that will essentially mean between 6.03 p.m. to 8.03 p.m. One important thing to note about this mission is that it's unmanned, but it will carry passengers, just not the human kind. Now, these include yeast, algae, fungi, and seeds, and these items are being carried so that their interactions with the deep space environment can be observed. Now, the Artemis 1 will circle the moon in an orbit, and then it will return to Earth after around 42 days. Artemis 1 is the first in a series of new moon missions, which will hopefully culminate in a manned landing in 2025. Now, CNN's Rachel Crane is joining us from New York City to tell us more. Rachel, can you explain the significance and aim of this mission? Well, Aisha, you know, NASA has not been back to the moon in over 50 years. And the intention of the Artemis program is to create a sustained presence on the moon. And Artemis 1, this test launch, which is scheduled to take flight Monday morning, it's the first major milestone before we're able to put human beings back on the moon. NASA intends to do that in 2025, and they intend to put the first woman and the first person of color on the moon. But before you can put them on a rocket and inside a spacecraft, you have to make sure that that system is safe. And the SLS rocket, this rocket that is powering the Orion spacecraft, it's never flown before. This will be its maiden voyage. And it's the most powerful rocket that NASA has ever created, even bigger than the Saturn V. When it takes flight, it will have over 8 million pounds of thrust. Um, but, you know, this is a 42-day journey. And there's a lot of objectives and milestones that they have to hit in order to deem this a success, one of which mm -hmm. is testing the heat shield uh, on the Orion spacecraft. It's the largest one NASA has ever created, and it has to be able to withstand temperatures of, you know, half of those on the moon, over 5,000 degrees. So uh, they have to make sure that that heat shield um, holds up and will keep the astronauts, once they are on board that spacecraft, safe uh, as it um, re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. But so the main objectives are really to demonstrate that this system, that the heat shield, that the ground systems, that the rocket itself, that it all works before they put human beings on board. Now, this right. mission is just going to sort of slingshot around the moon. It will come within 60 miles of the lunar surface at one point. Uh, so, you know, they'll, they'll be beaming back photos to us here on Earth, so we'll be able to follow along this incredible journey. But, you know, this is really, Aisha, the first major milestone before we are able to put human beings once again back on the moon. So a lot of excitement and everyone in the space community rooting for a successful launch. Back Absolutely. To you. Now, essentially, also in terms of space exploration, how much closer does this mission get us to exploring Mars? Well, you know, that's a really good question. And this is really the first major, this is, they're looking at the moon as a stepping stone to getting to Mars. So what's so interesting about the moon is that there is ice uh, on the moon and NASA is aiming to land those astronauts at the South Pole where we know that there is a lot of ice. Now, ice can be broken down into liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. And you know what that is? That's rocket fuel right there. So essentially, for a deeper space mission like going to Mars, you could potentially use the moon as, you know, a gas station per se, but also, uh, you know, get to fuel up to get to the uh, Mars, which is, of course, much further away. But also you can demonstrate the technologies that will be needed for sustained space, deep space mission like going to Mars. It's much easier to get to the moon. It's just a matter of days versus, you know, six to nine months to get to Mars. Mars. So, you know, you can really demonstrate uh, the technology that one would rely on in a Mars mission uh, using the lunar surface and uh, the, uh, the moon before you put those astronauts on a much riskier mission to Mars. So, of course, this is really just thought of as a major uh, stepping stone and a jumping off point to get to that holy grail of space exploration, putting boots on Mars. Back to you. Oral Rachel Crane from CNN, thank you so much for speaking to us and giving us all of that information. Now, with that, we're heading into a very short break, but stay with us to learn about some more interesting stories when we come back.